Good morning. Let me get everything else started here. Check my audio levels. Yeah. Bits! Thanks for the bits, Max! I'm not sure it 100% went through. Because I see it in chat. But I didn't hear it. Alright, and let me see. Since uh, Punch was playing Legend of Zelda yesterday, I kind of am in the mood for more Link to the Past soundtrack. Oh, there's the bits! Thanks, buddy! Definitely not needed, but definitely appreciated. Stop dropping things, Punch. Don't make me come up over there and pick it up for you. My invalid husband. <laughs> I love him. I love you very much, Punch. <clears throat> the Narwhal one died. Oh, nar Narwhal? Narwhal. Aww. Do you think that's why? Because of the music? Man. It was OC Remix. Um. Uh, you know, I want to make sure I have, like, free use music. Hence OC Remix in the background. So they're just, like, more sensitive about, um... Link to the past, because it's so good. I believe it. I don't know exactly why you can go to the video producer and see what got muted. Oh. Interesting. Well, I'm going to take the gamble and see what happens. Worst comes to worst, a few seconds of my video gets muted, which... That's okay. Because... Latin. It's all about Latin. Uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, so, as I've been saying and encouraging people, I'm going to be... I mean, teaching is a strong word for how I envision this. I'm going to be leading you through teaching yourself Latin. I'm walking with you on the Latin journey each week. Um... <clears throat> So this is the text that I chose to use. Uh, it is available, f again, for free, copyright free, uh, from, let me get it a little bit bigger here, uh, from textkit.com, uh, www.textkit.com. It has, that is a website that has a lot of copyright free Latin and Greek teaching tools. Uh, so I just went there and... <clears throat> The audio claimed is Connor Mac. Weird. Anyway, um, so if you want, you can go there yourself and download Latin for Beginners by Benjamin L. Doog, Doogie. Um, and just follow along, use the exercises at your own pace, read through uh, the matter I kind of skip over. Uh, if you have any questions. <laughs> yeah, Connor Mac is totally Bernie Mac's brother. Good guess. Punch just gave me a very confused look. I don't think he believes us, Max. Um, anyway, so the reason that I ch- Oh, sweet! Thanks, Roz. That's a brilliant idea. Aha. I should put that in my uh, stream title. Let me see if I can edit that real quick. Um, I'm doing it from my mobile, so obviously that adds some certain challenges. <clears throat> Here we go. Um, 
Exclamation point. Latin. Awesome. Okay. The reason that I chose this book... Um, Browse Mod, Best Mod... Woo, is A, it's copyright free. So... I can teach you from it without having, you know, Wheelock's descendants fly down upon me um, for not, you know, making everybody buy the seventh edition of his book. I think they're up to seven editions of Wheelock's Latin, which I love Wheelock's Latin. I, I would totally be using it. Um, that's it's Wheelock. It's one of the most common Latin textbooks, Wheelock's Latin. And again, it's in the seventh edition now. Um, let me just grab it real quick. <clears throat> just so you can see this one right here, Wheelock's Latin. Um, I do definitely recommend it. It's a great book, but... It's still under copyright because they keep releasing new editions, and so it would probably not super go over well in case anybody decided to report me. <laughs> Sounds like something you do to a trolley if it leaves the shopping center. Yeah, you, you, we lock, you lock those wheels. Uh, so this one, though, not in copyright, free to use by everybody. Uh, and it has about 70-something sections in it, each one a little manageable bite of Latin. The first ones are always going to be rough, though. I'll just be straight up front. The beginning of learning Latin is generally pretty intense. Because there's just, there's just, it's a beast. But once you get used to it, it's not bad at all. Um... And so if you do, like, two lessons a week, finish in far less than a year, and can just start reading some Caesar or, um, oh, shoot, what's the name of the historian who writes really easy Latin? The biographer historian. Cornelius Nepos. We could read some Cornelius Nepos. Um, he's pretty easy prose. And then go on to Latin. Cave Latinum Bestiam. Beware the the Latin. I, I'm I'm trying to oh Latin, dog Latin. <laughs> One time I had a I had a student who thought Pig Latin was a real language. As a class, we mocked her. It it was the only appropriate response. Poor child. Oh, Latin Abyss. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm with you now. My brain was just not sure what it wanted to do with that. All right. But let's jump in. Uh, so this was originally written f from a professor in Michigan State Normal College, which is probably just Michigan State today, uh, in 1911. 1909, uh, first publication, so makes you feel good. Uh, there are a couple really hilarious quotes in the beginning, as there usually are. Uh, so he was composing this to get people to read Caesar. Normal college is a totally frequent phrase uh, to be used. A2 interceptor, A2. Yeah. Very nice, Max. In Greek, it's kaisu technon. I like that, too. <laughs> I can't remember what the diff... Like, why it's a normal college. I don't remember what the... Um... Um, what that signifier means. To be fair. Alright, just... Kind of scooping through this beginning, not really necessary. 
There's some other people who helped out. Susan Jones, Clara and Allison, Helen Muir, and Orland Norris. I bet that Ch that's Chuck Norris's dad. He's a Latin teacher. 100%. 100%. Chuck Norris's dad was a Latin teacher, confirmed. Daniel Day-Lewis's father is a Latin teacher. It could happen. Alright. So these are all the chapters. There's a lot of things. Don't worry about it. Don't freak out. Uh, what is Latin? I'm not going to go through this introduction because I think you all kind of know some some things about like what you're doing here oh look they have review questions though how did the ancient Greeks and Romans compare how did Greece influence Rome what proportion of English words are of Latin origin and what kind of words are they why should we study Latin everybody answer that on your own all right pronunciation of Latin Latin is a language that exists to give its script to everyone else. True, but also false. Because where did the Latins get their script? Think about it. All right. How do the Greeks and Romans compare? They probably use concepts like smaller and larger and stuff. That's true. And in fact, in some things, Greeks have two versions of comparative words instead of just one. They loved comparing stuff. All right, for the most part, pronunciation of Latin is self-explanatory. Uh, we are gonna do the classical pronunciation as it is taught. So the vowels go, instead of A-E-I-O-U, A-A-E-O-U, for the vowels, A-A-E-O-U, A-A-E-O-U. Uh, I is gonna be kind of a consonant, yeah. Uh, v is going to be soft, wa. Um, consonants are generally otherwise going to be hard. K for C always, g for G always. Uh, you guys can figure out syllables. We're just going to practice saying a little paragraph though. No, not you. Oh, here we go. This is my favorite paragraph. To read Latin, it's on page 10 if you want to read it. To read Latin well is not so diff difficult, if you begin right. Correct habits of reading should be formed now. Blah, 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 blah. Then bear in mind that we should read Latin as we read English, in phrases rather than in separate words. Group together words that are closely connected in thought. No good reader halts at the end of each word. Those are good reading uh, instructions. Now we have to find... He has a little paragraph of easy Latin for us to pronounce. So here we go. Top of page 8. The Latins stole their script from other people, which means we're all just paying them back in kind by stealing theirs. Pretty much, yeah, pretty much they stole it from the Greeks. And then changed a few of them. So, obviously, interrupt at any point with questions... You can use your little, uh, highlight my message channel points if you have a really important question and you don't want me to miss it. Um, I'll be doing this every weekend, except for if there's a vacation or something comes up. And again, just try and do like an hour weekend. Couple chapters from this and just review and go all right so we're going to do this exercise just so you can hear latin uh, if you're by yourself you can say it with me if you're not by yourself but you don't care about sounding crazy you can read it with me too okay wade ad formicam opiger et considera vias eius et disque sapientiam. All right, so vade ad formicam. Formicam. 
All right, so again, the soft V's, Wade. Hard C's, Formicum. Uh, you'll see the line that's kind of at an angle, that's an acute. That's just marking where the emphasis on the syllable go goes. So the, the emphasis is always on the second to last or the third to last, which are referred to as the penultimate and the antipenultimate anti anti syllable. Um, essentially, the default is the furthest back, but if the last syllable is long, it gets knocked over one more. No, if the second syllable is long, it gets stuck there. So hence, formicum. It could go back to formicum, but me is long, so the accent stays there. I'm, I'm, I'm totally ignoring your comments. Punch just told me to. Anti pen ultimate is a more powerful defense than the anti sword ultimate. That's also nice. So, yeah, otherwise it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, so after the word sapientium, which is the end of the first line, beginning of the second, which means wisdom, we have the word quai. You'll get used to a lot of Q words, just like in English. It doesn't like to be without a U. It's pronounced together. Um, and the A-I is a singular sound, I. Sorry, I said A-I. I meant to say A-E because it sounds like I. Quai. Quai cum non habiat ducem, nec praeceptorem, nec principem. Carat in aestate cibum, sibi et congregat in messe quod comedat. <laughs> it's okay. You guys can pass notes. I don't care. Um, so again, all the hard C's, all the hard G's in that last line, you have congregat. Um, but otherwise, once you know the diphthongs and the vowel sounds, it, it comes pretty easy. So we'll practice saying all the words as we learn vocabulary and get you used to it. Uh, and again, the A-E is an I. So we have that a few times. Quai, praeceptorem, aestate. Here we go. Very, very nice, very easy Latin. So, but I will let you read the beginning on your own if you want practice saying Latin. I don't know how important that is to you. We're going to get... Our feet with, with grammar, though, we're going to talk about some basics of sentence construction and then just peek into how Latin does it without actually explaining much at all. So, the basic unit of language is a word. And words are used in a sentence to make a complete thought. Okay, hopefully you're with me so far. I think I'm on a commercial. What is this business? Skip. That's the only downside to having the YouTube tracks. You get commercials. Anyway. So every sentence needs a subject and a verb. Subject and a verb. Sometimes, as in here, subject is predic and predicate, as it's called. Oh yeah, I guess I could do that. Add super ad block to block out the YouTube videos. I'm so used to not doing that. Because the on my laptop, which is what I normally use... Where I watched YouTube, it was for, you know, watching 
people trying to make their living on YouTube, so I wanted to watch the ads so that they would get monetization. This I care less about. Yeah. Also, ad-free music, that's a thing. I mean, I have some OC Remix stuff downloaded, so I could just listen to it from my computer, and then everything would be fine. But that's how we get our money, Punch. Do you see this problem? Anyway. So, subject, predicate, basic uh, structure of a sentence. The subject is the noun. That's what the sentence is about. And a noun. Can anybody define a noun? Person, place, thing, or idea. That's right. You got it. Good job. Uh, so a noun is a person, place, thing, or idea. It can be a proper noun or a common noun. So here in the sentences that... Uh, our buddy, Ben, uh, Ben pointed out for us. We have one proper noun, Galba. Also an emperor of Rome, but in this sentence, just a far farmer. And in the second sentence, Nauta, we have a common noun, just a sailor, the sailor. Not a specific name. Oh, good. I'm glad that you can sing a lot of English grammar. That makes your life a lot easier. <laughs> that's a good quote. Alright. So that's a subject. That's a noun. The predicate in a complete sentence must have a verb. And that's it. It might have more, but the only thing it needs is a verb. So in the second sentence, nauta pugnant... The sailor fights, subject, verb, subject, predicate, done. Perfect. In the first sentence, we had the verb est, which means is. It's one of our to be verbs. And then agricola. Because the verb to be usually has some sort of predicate nominative with it. Some sort of noun or adjective on the other side, explaining what the subject is. So, Galba est agricola. Galba is a farmer. Nauta pugnat. The sailor fights. Okay. Subject, predicate. So, in the first sentence, the predicate is est agricola. The second sentence, just pugnat. Descartes est. Cogito ergo sum. Sorry, you said discard, so I went there. All right, um, good. Kind of, that's the basics. Very simple. Um, there's something I was going to say, though, and then I forgot. Oh, <clears throat> so you will notice in the Latin, it's fairly sparse. There is no word for a, there is no word for the. So in English, we supply them because we use the word a and the a lot. We generally do not say Galba is farmer and sailor fights. So we have to add it. Ah, yes, very good, Roswolf. I thought you were going there too. So we just add that. Do, 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 do. So this first part, again, the subject is going to be a noun. It can be a pronoun. And then the predicate is going to be the verb, the descriptors, um, prepositional phrases, all that kind of stuff. We'll get into more details later. Do, 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 do. All right. Some sentences have a direct object in the predicate. So that means the verb is acting on it. So here, the boy hit the ball, boy subject, hit verb, ball, direct object, boy hit the ball. Um, 
If we go back to our Nauta, Nauta Pugnat, Sailor Fights, maybe we want to know what the Sailor Fights, um, what should the Sailor Fights, Sailor Fights may, might make an interesting video game, you're right. <laughs> it is like a parameter to the verb. Um, so, for example, what if the Sailor Fights Galba? Nauta Galbam Pugnat. Right? And then we would have a direct object for the verb. With the verb to be, um, you don't have a direct object. What you have is, as I mentioned, that thing called the predicate nominative. Um, you don't Be something. Be doesn't act upon another noun. It simply explains who or what that person is. So uh, the verb to be is called a copula, a joining verb. Whereas fight is what's known as, so you can see the word up here, so the transitive verb. A verb that acts on another verb. A verb of doing stuff as one professor once said, which made us all laugh because that was not useful at all. All right, so here we will look at some Latin examples. So, America es patria mea. America is my fatherland. I'm going to translate it the way that English would. It's a verb of doing stuff to stuff, as opposed to a verb of just doing stuff on its own. Pretty much. That's a good way to define transitive and intransitive. Agricola filiam amat. The farmer loves the daughter. So, farmer, subject, loves, daughter, that whole section is a predicate. Love is the verb. Filiam, daughter, is the direct object. America est patria mea, America subject, est patria mea, predicate, but not a direct object. It's a copular verb. Filia est Julia, the daughter is Julia, Julia est agricola sunt in insula, Julia and the farmer are on the island. Oh, well that's not good. Sorry, the daughter of, the daughter and granddaughter of Augustus Caesar Julia were, um, kind of banished. I, I don't think that's what they're getting at here, but they might be. Does amat mean daughter in general, or is it tied back to the subject? Could that mean the farmer loves my daughter? So, um, yeah, so for in agricola filiam amat. So amat means love. This is, this is what we have to talk about once we get to Latin. Uh, Latin word order is not the same as English word order. English word order is the farmer loves the daughter. And so it's subject, verb, object. Latin is typically agricola filiam amat, subject, object, verb. So farmer loves his daughter, but filiam is daughter. Amat is love. Yeah, no, it was a good mistake because I got to talk about that thing. Oh, my headphones are being wacky. Give me a moment. Okay. Uh, so, as you're saying. So, it totally depends. Um, because Latin... Generally, if there is no other context, then yes, the object will tie back to the subject. Um, otherwise, Latin does try to clarify. So, the farmer loves his daughter, Agricola amat filiam. You could say the farmer loves his daughter, meaning somebody else's, 
Could be the daughter, could be a daughter, somebody's daughter. <laughs> but, again, without any other context or other pronouns to clarify, the best way of understanding it is back to the subject, as you did. So. But technically, all the translations I gave are correct. Um, all right. Julia aquam portat. Julia carries water. Rosam in comis habet. She has a rose in her hair. So again, we're going to assume that it's her hair and not she has a rose in somebody else's hair. Right? That, that wouldn't make a ton of sense, so they would want to clarify that if it were something like that. <laughs> it is better, without context, to assume that the possessor is the subject. Yeah, for sure. Julia es puella pulcra. Julia is a pretty girl. Beautiful. Pulcra. Pulcra is a little bit stronger than pretty. Domina filium pulcrum habet. Uh, the lady has a beautiful daughter. Okay, I don't know who the domina is that we suddenly have, but here we are. We've got a domina. That's a game I won't punch play on stream. Yeah. Maybe, he says. But it's Latin-ish. Ish. So you will notice, as we were just discussing, uh, thanks to Raz's question, the order that I translated the words do not match the words themselves. And Benny here in the text thankfully did um, translate in literal word order. So if you look at number eight, the lady a daughter beautiful has. Doesn't make any sense in English, but it's perfectly clear in Latin. Domina filium pulcrum habet. The lady has a beautiful daughter. Oh my goodness. Go away, advertisement. Okay. Now you're probably starting to wonder, okay, how does Latin know? How does Latin know which one's the subject, which one's the verb? You know, in sentence six, we don't even have a subject. Rosam in comis habet. A rose in her hair she has. She, Julia, is not there in the sentence. And it's all thanks to word endings. Right? Part word order, but only minimally in Latin. Latin depends much, much, much on the ending of the word, right? What's called inflection, how a word changes depending on what it's doing. We're going to get into that more next week. This week, we're just going to deal with a smidge, smidge more. So... There's, there's that word, inflection. So, in English, the common inflection is simply singular and plural. We only really pay attention to number for most words. Uh, so, do I have uh, a phone or two phones? A cup of tea, two cups of tea. My Final Fantasy mug. Do you have a mug or many mugs? Um, the regular rules in English is to add an S or an ES. But as we know, there's a ton of... Yeah, tense, that's true. Tense we also pay attention to. But in English with tense... We use a lot more helping verbs and a lot less changes to the way the verb looks. 
Although you're right, that that does count as inflection too. Yeah, one hundred percent. You are right. Um, verbs also change by number, so yeah, we're also talking about verbs here. Uh, generally, an S in the singular and no S in the plural. So it's the opposite of nouns. That's how I always remember when I was trying to learn this rule when I was a kid. Just the opposite of nouns. Okay, that makes sense. Um, is this a rap, Zelda? It sure is. I'm going to skip this one. Oh, hey, Hootie. I'm uh, unintentionally watching some advertisements while I get back to some music. What we've talked about so far is... <laughs> there are plenty of free desks. Um, and why don't we... Uh, this is the book that I'm using. So we've talked so far about some basics of Latin pronunciation, very briefly. We've talked about what makes up a sentence, a subject and a predicate, noun, verb, object. We've talked about how Latin does word order differently. English is subject, verb, object. Um, and Latin is typically subject, object, verb. But the main way that you need to understand a Latin sentence is by using the inflection in the words. An inflection is how a word changes noun or verb or adjective, as we'll see with Latin. They like to inflect everything. Um, so how it changes. Right now we're just focusing on number. Doing one teeny teeny one um, because in English we are familiar with words changing if they're singular or plural uh, so we have the sailor fights the sailors fight in Latin nauta pugnat or nautai pugnant okay so here's your first Latin rule nouns that end in a in the singular and an A-E in the plural. When they're the subject, that is. The, he's trying to be too nice to you. I'm much meaner. I'm like, that is, that is barely scratching the surface, dude. That's going to make people think this is way too easy. Um, so, again, nouns su that are the subject and end in an A become A-E in the plural. So, now, ta one sailor, now tie more than one sailor. Okay. So now let's practice some Latin vocabulary, shall we? Agricola. You can say it with me, especially if you're by yourself or you don't mind sounding crazy. Agricola. Farmer. So in the plural, that A would become A-E. Agricolae. Aqua. Water. Aquai. Causa. Causai. Domina. Domini. Filia. Filiae. Fortuna. Fortunai. Fuga. Fugai. Inuria. Inuriae. Una. Unai. Nauta. Nautai. Wella. Wellai. Silwa, silwai. Terra, terai. We'll repeat those. Can I get some cherry agricola? Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. All right, so terra, land, terai. Lands. Also a character in Kingdom Hearts. Just like aqua, water. Aquai, waters. Pretty much just to get stuff in Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy, you just take these words and, like, mess them up a little bit. So, like, this chapter will teach you 90% of how to make a video game. 
Sounds right. Silva. Well, so Silva is how we would say it now, but Silva is the classical pronunciation for forest. Silva. Multiple forests. Puella. Girl. Puella. Girls. And again, that's just adding an E to this. So the plural of terra firma is terrae firmae. Are you making a joke? It should just be terrae firmae. But I think you're making a joke. Or it's just auto-corrected. <laughs> um. Here's, here's a fun little weird linguistic thing. So the word for girl, puella, then becoming puellae, um, is actually a diminutive of the word for boy, puer. So a girl is a little boy, linguistically. <laughs> Rowans! <laughs> so weird. Okay. Because I knew a fermata was a term, but I wasn't. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm not smart enough. Right? I mean, it's just a linguistic thing that I don't think anybody really thought about. Um, but that's how the word was formed, weirdly. So weird. Now ta, single sailor. Now tai, plural. So if you wanted to say hello, sailor, you would say... <laughs> Punch is looking at me with great, great concern. Uh, salve, nauta. Hello, sailor. The Romans were less strange than the Greeks, though. Luna, single moon. Lunai, multiple moons. Which doesn't come up very much, as, as you might suspect. It was pretty much just the one moon they talked about. No, we're not going to talk about what the Greeks did. Inuria. Injury, right? It's right there pretty much the same as the English. Inuriai, in the plural. Injuries. Uh, fuga, flight. That makes sense. Fugitive. It... it he gave you in the parentheses common English words that are related, so that helps. <laughs> also, Hootie raises an excellent point. Where to even start with what the Greeks did? They created robots. <laughs> there we go. For two, they did. Fortuna, fortune, fortunai, fortunes, philia, daughter, philiae. And all it is is adding that E at the end, because the A-E sound is I. I. Exactly. Magical girl. That's an important one. Why am I spilling my tea? It's because I'm gesticulating too wildly. Domina. The lady of the house. Related to the word domus for house. This is the house lady. Domini. Plural, ladies of the house, which you don't, you don't want more than one. That that would not, that would not end well. Causa, causai, reasons. <laughs> I'm getting some of those references. All right, and then the farmers. We need we need so many farmers at Gricolai. So here's the sentence again. Nauta pugnat, sailor fights. Now tie pugnant, the sailors fight. So the A now ta, the A E now tie. But now we're pointing out the second part. When you have a singular verb with a T, it becomes a plural with an NT. And that one is actually like you can take that one to the bank. That's a pretty good. A singular T. Does that make it now to Luna for Sailor Moon? Or do I have it backwards? <laughs> okay. Um, it would probably be if you were wanting to actually translate Sailor Moon. 
it would probably be the sailor of the moon, right? Because that's where she's from. So you would say Nauta Lunai. Spelled Nauta. Which we'll get to next week why that would be the case. Although I guess you could, like, argue and make it like a locative kind of thing. Like, I'm the sailor on the moon. Then it would be Nauta Luna again. But yeah. <laughs> and you're right, pungent is a plural of pungit. But actually what it is, is um, what you're pointing out, Roz, is, is actually true. But our adjective pungent comes from the participle that's formed from the verb, which also gets an NT in it for reasons that we'll get to much later. Hey, there's no meme citations in this chat. <laughs> Learning Latin through anime. It is true. And the sailors on the moon fight too. They do. Now Taipu dot. Alright. Do, do, do. So just like in English, the subject and the verb have to agree. So if the subject is plural, the verb is plural. Okay. Next we have a sorting system. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Man, I'm such a rule follower. You guys are so mean. <laughs> Alright. So here's a couple um, baby verbs for us to learn. Amat, to love. Now, so in the plural, what would that be? I'm going to type it. See? You just add that NT to make it plural. Amat, amant. Laborat, laborant. To work. Right? Labor. Get it. Nuntiat, nuntiant. To announce. Uh, Anuntio is actually a position in the Vatican. It's kind of like a embassy kind of person. So they go around and say things. Nuntio. Amant would be a good name for a piece of software or high in fiber. Okay. Portat carries. Portant. Multiple people carry. Pugnat, as we've seen. Fight. Pugnant. Amant. <laughs> they love. It means they love. Everybody loves that too. Right? So let's practice translating some English to Latin here. Ah! So we need the word for daughter and the word to love. So what's the word for daughter? What's the word for love? Let's see if you guys can remember things. I'm going to make you do it. Correct, Roz! Woo! The daughter loves. Filiamat. And then if you want to make it plural, what do you have to do for these words? There's your little asterisk for we're going to learn a lot more things that are going to break your brain. But right now we can make it easy. Filii amant. Exactly. I'll make it to the verbs are at least easy to see. All right. <laughs> I guess that's true. I think that's why I took to Latin so well. My brain is broken in the right way for this. Ophelia amat, filii amant. The sailor is carrying. All right. So what was our word for sailor moon? So we can remember our sailor. I mean, you're right. If you got Turkish and Python and English. Latin. Latin's a breeze. Taylor. Mm -hmm. 
Sailor is carrying. That's nice for us. So let's go find the word for sailor. Exactly. Now tell Portot the sailor carries. Good job, Hootie. And if you want to make that plural. Other news I've finally gotten. Symphony of the Night. Oh, good. See, Hootie? Latin's easy. Everybody can learn Latin. It's only day one, though, so let's not get too cocky. Eh, no worries about it. Now tie portant. Exactly, Hootie. What would the sniper carries? <laughs> um... They didn't really have snipers. So I'm going to have to investigate what the word... Um... Oh look, I got a spam bot. Does anyone want to ban my spam bot? <laughs> yeah, this is super nice. I like learning Latin. All right. Uh, so I think we got, let's do the Latin to English ones, because those will be super. I'm sorry, I know you wanted to use the band hammer on somebody. All right, nauta pugnat. So all the verbs are right above for us. So we just have to try and remember the nouns. How do you say, na 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 na, hey, 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 goodbye. All right, so the nanas would all be the same. Those those don't need to be translated. Hey, hey, hey. You'd probably just translate it all to salvete, because then it would be the right number of syllables, and then goodbye, wale. But then you'd want to be walete if you're doing plural in the first part. You'd want to be plural in the second part. Right? Because you're probably saying hi to multiple people and goodbye to multiple people. Anyway. I'm going to translate some more Latin for you guys. Why would anybody buy followers? That does sound like money. Snow dinner? I don't get it. No, ship, wait. Ship dinner. Anyway, <laughs> I like that we just get to sit around and be nerds. Boat snack. Oh, okay. Boat snack. Yeah. Dinner. Oh, yeah. Because now we could be the genitive too. Dinner of the boat. So the boat's dinner. <laughs> My brain went to, uh, Niwis. It's a snow. So nata pugnat, now tai pugnat. The sailor fights, the sailors fight. Dinner on board the boat. Hmm. So the cana part would be right. Um, on the boat, you'd probably use in nawe. Cana in nawe. Dinner on the boat. Oh. I knew it was a reference, but I could not remember what for. I've only seen that movie once, so. I'll stop getting tea all over myself. Puella amat, puella amant. The daughter loves, the daughters love. Agricola portat, agriculae portant. The farmer carries, the farmers carry. Filia laborat, filiae laborant. The daughter works, the daughters work. Nata nutiat, nautai nuntiat. The sailor announces, the sailors announce. Dominae amant, domina amant. The mistresses love, mistress loves. Alright, that's it. 
That's all we got to do today. So just try to remember by next week. <laughs> Inflection, singular plural. A to A E, T to N T. You're going to get super used to that, though. First declension is going to be easy peasy by the time this is done. Broken? <sighs> Frago? But, like, if are you saying, like, I am broken? Ah, uh, memoria froggy turd. So the farmer, are you just trying to say the farmer loves the daughter and the daughter carries? Ricola filium. Gotta have a M after that. And we'll discuss why next time. Because next time we'll start doing more of the cases. Oh, that should be Froggy Tur, sorry. Not Froggy Tut. Come on. Frog. Frog. Froggy Tur is broken. There we go. Froggy Tur. Froggy Tur. Memory is broken. Alright, and there's a picture of a Domino right there. Check out that sweet hairstyle. That's very, um... Like the... Vespasian kind of era hair. What are you, what are you pointing at? Froggy turd. Alright, so next time... We'll continue talking about the different things d nouns can do in a sentence and how different they look when they're doing that. Hey, right. uh, I should finish my tea, get ready for mass. Does Latin have a spelling for the D3 sound? As spelled ye. Um, the short answer is no. So the I before the U is generally pronounced kind of like a yo um the yod marker as a word the that yod sound so yulia you know um would get that but there's no j j which if you're asking there's no j i don't think I'm trying to think of a latin word that has a j in it doesn't doesn't happen so think yeah anyway any other questions so it completely doesn't exist where did that come from and why does english spell it j that is an excellent linguistic question that i don't know the answer to i know that you know over time the I in Latin did become distinguished between the more Y eyes and the vowel eyes. So the um, pre, uh, pre vocalic eyes, like Yulia, that I, and you know. Where did it start getting the J? Oh, cool. I'll see if I can find something. Okay, it's a ch, j to ch kind of thing. Yeah. It must have been sometime in the late Empire slash medieval period that the vowel started to soften. I mean, the consonant started to soften, as it were. As that is very common in modern European languages. But not in not in Latin, because they have the you know the hard G is Gaius. 
I guess the closest you would get is the GN sound. You get kind of a yeah. Um, let's see if I can find an example of that in the pronunciation guide. So I can explain this better, as this is not my forte. Mm. There is a kind of meh sound. Here we go. N before C, Q, or G. It's like meh in sing. Sing. Encora. Encora. There's also kind of this phonetic thing happening. Which is the sound of a softer G. Um, and like the GU sound, gwis. It, it helps to soften out some of those sounds. But ch, p, and t are more k, p, and t. Which, in part, is just English pronunciation issues. So, like, Greek actually does differentiate between the kappa and the ch of the chi. Um, but the way that English phonetics are done, there's no way to say a k or a p or a t without that puff of air. But other languages, you can do that. Um... <laughs> yeah, so it's like... <laughs> Technically, it'd be Phoebe, Phoebe, Phoebe. I would say Phoebe T. Phoebe, Phoebe, actually. Phoebe, 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 Phoebe. Yeah, that would be the most closest I could get in Latin. Phoebe. We gotta have some of that aspiration. Because Latin. Anyway. They're not PB. Poi. Because it's more of the poi. Yeah. OE is oi. Foib. <laughs> I like saying foib because there's a Greek play where Phoebe is invoked, but the end is dropped off because of poetry and poetic reasons. So it's pronounced foib in that line. Foib! Hey foib, what's up? That's that's not how you speak to a god though. Just saying. Alright. Um I know I don't have the best pronunciation guide answers, Roswav, but do let me know if you have any more. I'll try my best. Ayu. Yeah, this is a weird one. The EU. Ayu. Seu. Ayu. Mostly they're all pretty easy though. I. Ow. A. Ayu. Oi. We. We. Weak. Weak. This is one of my favorite words. Weak. Weak. A A E O U. You know, Hootie, I believe that. I believe you do speak to all the gods like they're your homies. Ew. I'm hearing moon base alpha. I don't know what that means. Okay. Well, I'm going to go figure out what Punch just said, and then I'm going to get to church. So, everybody, have a good day. I'm not sure what we're doing today. Because life. So. 
we'll keep you informed.